since you're all here, I think I'll go ahead and begin, and if other people filter in, so be it. What I'm going to be talking about today is thinking about contrasting pedagogical strategies for implementing turning point in small class settings versus large lecture halls. And my experience primarily with this is in the small class settings, my hands-on experience. Um, but my colleagues, Angie Phillips and Kurt Radford, and I have, have uh, spoken extensively about their experience in the large lecture halls. And so I'm going to try to share some of their experiences with you today, as well as my own experiences implementing this in a small class. So for an overview, <clears throat> I'm going to focus on a large-scale institutional implementation of Turning Point into the basic public speaking course at Illinois State University. And if you were at the dinner last night, you heard me talk a little bit about that. Basically, last semester we rolled that out, uh, approximately 45 instructors and 1,600 students. So it was a big rollout. And I think we probably experienced about all the issues that you co possibly could experience in the course of that. And so uh, I'll talk about some of the things that emerged as best practices from the instructors that I spoke with and some of the things that I found myself. Also try to highlight some of the pedagogical strategies that my colleagues have shared with me for the large lecture halls versus the small classroom settings. What do you need to think about differently about how to use this in a small classroom and a large lecture hall? And what can you use the same in both? So my experience with this was it was implemented in Fall of Six, and, and I was kind of the liaison um, between our technical support folks and our instructors of COM 110. So I was on both, working on both sides of that. We required all new students to have clickers, and all new students were required to take COM 110 in their first year, our basic public speaking course. So what this means is that all students at Illinois State by spring 2010 will have these clickers because they will have had to pass through this course. So it is truly an institution-wide rollout. All right, so I'm going to talk first about using clickers in a small class. The environment that I use these in in the COM 110 class is a small classroom setting of 23 students. Rooms are about the size of from the divider over to here, so that gives you an idea uh, of the type of space that we're working with. Some of the motivating factors for us to adopt this were we can address the needs of individual students experiencing difficulty. So if there's 23 students, two or three of them are having trouble getting logged in, we can go help those students really easily. Also, it's easy to collect the clicker ID numbers and link students with responses for engagement. Um, in the first rollout of this, we didn't have a way to centrally collect all of the clicker ID numbers, which is something that is changing now, obviously, and, and will soon um, be centralized, and you'll have a number of different ways to do that. So for us, it was an issue. For you, in the future, it probably won't be an issue. But it, it's very easy to pass around a sheet of paper and have 23 people write their clicker ID number and then go import that. So that was easy for us to implement. Some of the inhibiting factors, we have the ability to address needs of individual students experiencing difficulties. <laughs> So I put this as motivating and inhibiting. When you're in that smaller classroom, the students expect you to know everything about everything in the classroom. And so even for the instructors that you know, just had the training of this and hadn't used it before, they were expected to be able to help the students. So for some of them, that was a little bit stressful. So for those of you that are here, it's probably not going to be as stressful because you've gone through this and you understand how to use clickers. But for some of your colleagues that you may be trying to sell on this technology, this could be something that could be an inhibiting factor for them. Maybe uh, they would feel nervous about not being that comfortable with helping students with the clickers. Uh, also, in the small class, it may not be as much of a time saver as using clickers in a large lecture situation. So if your primary focus is to use these clickers to accumulate grades and combine those together, it will still save you some time with 23 students as opposed to having to do pen and paper with that. But it's not going to save you nearly as much time as it will in a larger classroom setting. So that's something to think about in terms of using those for a small class. So some of the best practices that emerged from our first semester implementation, these are things that I found and things that the 45 or so instructors under me mentioned to me about what they liked most about using the clickers and some of the best practices of those. First, we decided not to use the clickers for evaluation in the first semester. So we didn't do quizzes, we didn't do tests, we didn't do attendance. These are things that students get very stressed out about when it comes to technology. And so if the technology isn't working or the students don't feel comfortable with the technology, they get jumpy and they get worried about these sorts of things. So first semester, we thought, let's make the students comfortable with this technology. Let's make the instructors comfortable with this technology. Let's lower the stakes a little bit and allow for more margin of error when we have devices that may not work or batteries that might be dead or, or any of those sorts of things. So we didn't use them for evaluation, just for engagement. The engagement we used, comprehension checks on concepts covered, I think that's 
multidisciplinary. I think that's something that everybody that uses these can use them for. You ask the students sample questions to see if they've comprehended that. You look at the results. If the results indicate that they know it, you can move on. If the results indicate that they don't know it, then you know as an instructor you need to revisit that, spend a little bit more time talking about those particular things. So that's very useful in helping your students understand the material and helping you pinpoint what they don't get before you test them on it, they miss it on the test, and then you move on. This allows you to actually build that knowledge at that point in the semester and then allow them to build on top of that later and pinpoint that earlier than the exam. The second thing we use them for is a demographic audience analysis, and this is probably going to be more discipline specific uh, as to what your class is. But in the COM 110 class, the public speaking class, we hammer home the idea of you have to tailor your message to your audience. And we, the, since everyone has to take the COM 110 class, we talk about basic critical thinking ideas and basic relating to other people. So it's kind of a core development class for, for uh, students to be able to function in other classes. And so we're able to ask a number of demographic questions to let the students know who's in their class to help them target their message to their audience. Do they have a lot of transfer students in the class? How does this affect the examples they can use in their speeches? Are they all freshmen in the class? So what experiences can they draw from and talk about that? Do we have a diversity of people in the class? If so, what types of language might we need to think about being offensive to other people that isn't offensive to us? So we're able to kind of open their eyes a little bit through the demographic audience analysis function of the clickers, and then we can collect data anonymously. So our students are more apt to be honest about it when we just put up the results rather than linking those, having people have to raise their hands, you know, are, what type, are you, are you Christian, are you Jewish, you know, is Hindu your religion? Instead of students having to raise their hand and self-identify, we can just put those up anonymously, which I think gives us a much better picture of who our audience is and takes a lot of the stress out of people having to raise their hand. Audience perception of student topics is something that I spoke about last night at the dinner, finding out whether the audience perceives um, your, your persuasive speech to be something they agree with or something they disagree with. We also use this for our informative speech assignment where the students just construct an informative speech telling the audience about a certain topic or a certain concept. And we use this for basic knowledge. We have the students share their topic and then we have the class vote on how familiar they are with that topic so they know how basic they have to go with their presentation. And then the thing I'm going to talk about at the end of my presentation today is student evaluation of clicker use. So I have some slides from some students that I pulled last semester to get their perceptions of the clickers and perceptions of things related to those clickers. So I'll show you what that data is later on in the presentation. And the recommendation we have is for you, if you're adopting this or trying to persuade others to adopt it, to do at least one semester of just the engagement functions of this prior to the assessment. And in one of the large lectures uh, that I'm going to talk about, it was a large biology lecture of about 300 students, and they jumped in feet first, first semester, wanting to associate quizzes and associate all sorts of things with that. And they ended up having to spend an entire class period just addressing the needs of students with the clickers, having the students get familiar with logging in because the students were just having difficulty with the manual logging in process. So it's very useful as an engagement tool, very useful for these things here that I've talked about in our course and, and, I, and I would imagine in yours as well, getting familiar with it and taking the stress out of it for the students for one semester we found is something that made students in our classes a lot more comfortable with the technology than the students in the classes that jumped in feet first. So if you've, if you've already done this and are familiar with it, this probably doesn't apply to you, but if you're thinking about persuading others to do it or how to do it, it might be a helpful thing to recommend to them. The large lecture course that I'm going to talk mainly about was our COM 161 class, which was a media writing class. And basically, it meets about 150 to 200 students in a large lecture hall where they learn different ways to, to media write, and then they break into smaller lab sections. So I'm going to talk about the overall lecture. So there's the environment, about 120 students. All right, motivating factors, engagement. Uh, you know about this. If you're in a lecture hall, your students are sleeping, they're reading the newspaper, they're doing something else. Making them answer questions periodically throughout the lecture helps them stay engaged, helps them stay focused. And again, you can get that instant feedback from the large group of people. Some of the inhibiting factors, collecting the IDs, I talked about that a little bit. Obviously, 23 students is manageable. This many students can be difficult. The centralization of these IDs, though, is something that going to take care of that. But changing or forgotten device IDs, they forget to bring it to class, they'll complain about it. I say 
That's part of being prepared for class. You have to bring this. If you don't bring this, it's like you're not here because you're not participating. You're just sitting there passively. But it, sometimes it's difficult to tell young students that and have them accept that. So just institution, uh, institutionalizing that, putting that in your syllabus, you need to bring this every day, we found is very helpful. If you just tell them, then they can say, well, you know, I don't have one or I didn't bring one. But if you actually put it in your syllabus and from day one stress that, we found that it makes them much more compliant.